Ang susunod na programa ay Rated PG. Ito ay nangangailangan ng patnubay at gabay ng magulang para sa mga batang manunood. Warning. The following content may contain elements that are not suitable for some audiences. Viewer discretion is advised. Are watching me by recluders. I bought a new house in a small town of Winthrop. The house was cheap but the most important part was that I need to get away from the city. A few months ago, I had a run-in with a stalker while I had managed to get him arrested. I couldn't shake the feeling of eyes just constantly watching me. I felt like there were eyes everywhere. At home on the street, I so decided to move out into the country for somewhere with less people, just for peace of mind. The house itself was a big somewhat old, but otherwise very welcoming. The agent who introduced me to the house had been required to mention that a serial killer had lived here in the past, which was why the house was so cheap. However, he and later my next door neighbor Sarah both told me to pay the thought of no mind. Four other owners have lived in the house since then and all of them were very happy with it. I love the house. Its interior furnishings were beautiful and very comfortable. The people of Winthrop were friendly, often bringing over freshly baked pastries or inviting me over for dinner. Get-togethers, they said, were the key to making sure everyone who lived in Winthrop loved it here. Yet, after a week, I stopped loving it. The feeling of someone watching returned worse than before. I tried to ignore it but soon I started losing sleep. Giant bags grew under my eyes and I began yawning almost as much as I breathed. Sarah was kind enough to let me stay in her house for a few nights. It was during the time that I heard the legend of Forrest Carter, the serial killer who lived in my house. While no one who knows his exact kill count, Carter, also known as the Winthrop Peacock, was a man with extremely severe case of narcissism. The legend says that he couldn't fall asleep if he didn't feel like he was being watched. He was finally arrested for putting up a scare scrow to watch him during the night. Only it wasn't a scarecrow. Carter had murdered a 17-year-old girl. Just her corpse could stare at him. The story gave me shivers, and after I went home, I felt like there were hundreds of pairs of eyes just watching me, no matter how I turned. Today, however, was the first day that I acted out. I was cooking breakfast when I felt the eyes. Instinctively, out of fear, I threw my kitchen knife, which lodged, into, lodged itself into the wall as I pulled it out. I found myself staring at the pair of eyes, speaking in formaldehyde. I've been watching the police peel away those drywall of my house for hours now. So far, they found 142 pairs of eyes in little glass jars. Scariest thing is, each and every one was staring at me. Twist at the end by A1267. Cradling my four-year-old daughter in my arms, I all I could do is... All I could do was listen as the screaming outside the house got louder and louder, intersped with sound of violence and horrible, horrible wet thuds and the unmistakable echo of muscle and sinew resisting the force that was slowly tearing them apart. It started just three years ago. Something happened out of in the world and before we even can get news of what's going on, seemingly half of the world is gone. Police and military were not able to stop it, providing such a short frame of resistance. It's hard to know whether it was real or just a look. There was no centralized target, no way to use our most powerful weapons, not without incinerating ourselves in the process. They poured forth across the world from wherever it was it has started. I hear banging on the downstairs and the screams of people being slaughtered. Unable to mount a proper resistance against such a force, it doesn't take long before the pounding gives way to splintering and the sound of shattering wood. They're in the house. No more than a moment or two passes before the door to the bedroom starts shuddering. The things I pile against it are holding, for now. But I know, realistically, that they're going to manage to come through. I keep rocking my little girl, humming a lullaby in her ear to calm her as she cries. The pounding grows in force and volume. The frame started to crack. 
I put my little girl on my lap in her back of my chest and I stroke her head with both hands from the top of her skull down across her ears just as I've done ever since she was a baby. Just the way desperate crying comes to a series of sobs and hiccups. He, her small body shuddering against mine in fear. I keep humming to her, soothing her, acting for a world as if nothing is out of place, not a single thing amiss. Agonizingly slowly, in a reverse cadence of the sound of slim, splintering wood, she calms down. I can feel it when she stops dancing. As I keep stroking her down to the sides of her head, a final hiccup of a sob, and she falls quiet. Her body relaxed, she doesn't even have time to realize what's happening as I twist her neck with a violent jerk. Accompanied by a dry snap of sound, she dead before she can even slam down into my lap. The door is giving way, the furniture pushed back. I may be a torn limb for limb while I scream but at least my baby's angel is safe from harm. Crying isn't going to help by honest rage. I pointed the gun at the sick bastard who killed my wife. He sobbed as he feared for what was to come. I pulled the trigger. If only he spoke and tried to reason with me then maybe he could live. But that was obviously not going to happen. After all, he was born just a few minutes ago. Return of the Messiah by Hans Frank in the year 2026, the Messiah came back to earth, down to earth. She performed a miracles and cured the sick. There was no doubt as to her authenticity. She appeared to all nations at once and believed all worship her. Sometime later of this period of our history known as the Age of Peace, she dropped a bombshell on us. She warned us that heaven was almost full. Nobody had gone to hell during this age. There were a fixed amount of spots left. Paradise will be close to all who died after the gates closed. That is when the mass suicides began. Taking your own life, she had told us, was not a sin if you died in a pious man. The race was on. She looked on, was pleased. She returned to her home, to her throne of fire and flames, and greeted all the wounded with her wicked horns. The enemy by AG. I flung myself through the door and bolted the toppled long dread refrigerator that served as an ineffective barricade in front of me. My legs propelled me through the, the room and into the small hallway of the other side. I could stop to eat and to eat the expired contents of the fridge, appealing to me despite their stench after several days without food. The shrieks of pain and cries for mercy around me spurred my body onward and filled me with unexpected energy in spite of my hunger. We were at war, came to halt in front of the small bathroom. A noise, something behind the shower curtain, my fear heightened and images of the enemy flooded my mind. Merciless beasts wearing human skin devouring indiscriminately accepting no priest and expecting no argument zombies it had been begun as we expected with a virus the original infected were almost a fish there was no humanity left in them just mindless rage twisted bodies and some primal urge to consume others our generation had prepared with almost obsessive focus for this monster the first wave was eradicated with almost laughable ease we're not prepared for adaptation we were not prepared for a creature we breed by destroying the instantly recognizable zombie. A creature with more tuck, more most of the first zombies were killed at a close range, you understand since longer range attacks were less likely to be fatal. We had trained ourselves even before the outbreak to equate infection with death when it comes to zombies. A person died with their eyes clouded over and they started biting not when you pull a bullet in their head. The new strain of the virus still controlled the body, yes, but it left other faculties to the host. Maybe you could pull the trigger on a hopelessly crazy caricature of your best friend, your spouse, your child. But what if there was still a soul behind those eyes? If even as they attack, they sob and scream in their own voice? All the virus he needed was a moment's hesitation. I bet you hesitate. I did. Which is why now I con could only watch as my arm wrenched back to the shower curtain and my hands reached for the cowering child. 
why I can only beg for forgiveness before the virus used my mouth to tear rag bloody hunks from his body, why I couldn't even vomit as my hunger dissipated with the now sickening familiar taste of human flesh. We were at war and I am the enemy.